perform sessionization. So to be clear about the problem that we want to solve here, in sessionization, we can consider a click stream, for example, where one has a set of user clicks in a table. And one parameter to this problem is that there's a column in the user clicks that identifies the time at which that click occurred. And another parameter is a value that defines the duration of a session. So for instance, one might say that after five minutes, if a user has not clicked again on the site, that the first session that the user was in has ended and any new clicks that arrive will be considered as part of a separate session. So the desired output here is that in addition to the rows in the input where we have the information about the click time and the user ID and the page that the user clicked on and so forth, we want to additionally have a session ID column. So this is something that's not actually in the input, but something that we'll infer based on the session duration that's given as a parameter. And the desired output is that if more than this timeout has passed, then a new session ID will be assigned. So some initial observations on how we would go about implementing this function is that we need to have a partition function. The reason for this, of course, is that a user is going to make several clicks on the site, and what we actually want to do is look at all of those clicks for the user. And in fact, we actually want to look at them ordered by time so that we can see between successive clicks that a user makes whether more than the timeout period has elapsed. And another observation here is that we need the output columns of the function to vary based on the input columns. Of course, we could write a function that would work only on a given kind of input table, but we can actually do better than that. We can write a function that will work on any sort of input table, and given the information that it needs to solve the sessionization problem, we'll be able to produce the desired output. So just to give a simple example of what a click table might look like, there's almost no information in this click table to keep things simple, but we have a timestamp and a user ID. Then the desired output is that for each user, we can add uh, information about the sessions that that user has uh, participated in. So we can see on the right an example where user 238909 has made a click at 10 o'clock, then another click 24 seconds later, and then another click at 10.01 and 23 seconds. And all of these clicks are within 60 seconds of each other, which is the timeout parameter that's been specified. So even though the first click is more than a minute apart from the third click, between any successive click, there's less than 60 seconds that has elapsed. By contrast, the fourth click at 10.02 and 40 seconds is more than 60 seconds after 10.01 and 23, so a new session ID will be assigned there. So hopefully this makes it clear what is meant by the sessionization problem. So now our implementation strategy for writing a function that actually solves this problem. So as before we mentioned, we need to implement the partition function interface because we need the function to be able to see groups of rows, and those groups of rows will be specified using the partition by clause. In addition, we want the output columns to be all of the input columns plus the session ID that we're going to compute inside the function. So the output columns will vary based on the input columns, and this will actually be something that we can decide in the constructor of our function when we're completing the runtime contract. Also, at initialization, we're going to be given the name of the column that describes the time at which a click occurs. So we need to determine the index of this column so we can use it to look it up in each row at runtime. And also in our constructor at initialization we'll be given a timeout value. So we want to save this so that we can have it when we're invoked at runtime. And just to keep this example simple, I'm going to make a few assumptions here. I'll assume that the time column is an integer. Uh, I'm not going to check in the constructor that the input's actually provided with an order by clause and so forth. And of course, an important note about this example is that the parallelization is handled transparently by SQLMR. 
it's not something that needs to be done explicitly in the uh, function. So just at a high level, uh, what the function will look like in Java will have a class, which we call sessionize, because that's the, the name of the function that we want to implement. We want it to be a partition function, so we need to implement the partition function interface. Then we need to have a constructor that takes in the runtime contract. This is called at initialization. And then as part of implementing the partition function interface, we need to have a operate on partition method. And so this is called at runtime for each partition. So for user one, two, three, it will be called and the row iterator will have all the clicks for user one, two, three. And then separately, it will be called for user four, five, six, and so on. And in fact, there are gonna be many instances of this function running throughout the cluster in parallel. So even though this function can be written sequentially, it will be sort of transparently parallelized across the cluster to take advantage of all the machines in the system. And uh, finally, just at the bottom here, we have uh, the state that we need to save from initialization and use during runtime. So the index of the, the time column and the uh, timeout that specifies how long we need to allow between clicks before we uh, consider a new session to have started. So just to show what the uh, constructor would look like, we have the constructor taking a runtime contract and from this, it can get the input info, which it describes the argument clauses to the function. So in this case, we have the time column and timeout argument clauses that specify the column that contains the timestamp and also the timeout that we want to allow to elapse between the uh, successive clicks before considering a new session to have started. And once we can get this information from the argument clauses, then we can go ahead and define the output columns of the function. The output columns are going to be all of the columns of the input. So we can say that the output columns just add to the front of this list all of the input info columns. And then additionally, we will add another column, that's session ID, and that will be of type uh, integer. Then finally, we can set the output info that we created that describes the output columns and complete the contract. So once the contract is completed, this tells the query planner that the function will behave at a certain way at runtime. In particular, it will output rows that have the columns that have been described. So now to look at what the operate on partition method looks like, and this is invoked at runtime once initialization has completed. We're going to get a iterator that will iterate over all the rows in the partition and an emitter, which can be used to emit output rows. So this will allow us to access all the rows for a given user. And so what we wanna do when we start is say initially there'll be uh, session ID zero. And just as a way of initializing uh, we want to say that the, the time of the, the last click that we saw, of course, we haven't seen any clicks yet, but we'll say it's negative infinity or, or the minimum value allowed for an integer. So very, very, very negative number. And then we'll go through each row in the partition and determine if the time of the click that we're seeing now is more than timeout number of seconds after the last click we saw. So for instance, if the timeout is 60, we'll determine here has more than 60 seconds elapsed since the last time of the prior row that we saw. If so, we'll go ahead and increment the session ID, uh, indicating that a new session has started for this user. And in any case, whether a new session has started or not, we want to emit the output row that has all of the input columns plus the current session ID that we've determined and possibly incremented as a result of a certain timeout elapsing between successive clicks from the user. Uh, finally, before we go on to look at the next row, we'll save the time of this row so that we can use it to compare when we examine the next row. I hope that this session was useful in showing how SQLMR can be used to solve problems that might otherwise be quite difficult to solve with a database using SQL.